Hello, how are you doing? One planet under a groove, or trying to be. <clears throat> it is Sunday, the 22nd, after the inauguration of that fool. I will be talking about music, but I want to just warn you that I will be speaking out loudly about my displeasure and uh, concern about our, our new administration often because it's 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 uh it's it's a nightmare but i'm going to start this video by reviewing the new eno album which edward tommy Souza was so kind to send to me i have never met edward tommy Souza. he's down in texas we've never met i don't know why tommy decide to send me records he sent me the note I mean I do know why what I'm saying is thank you so much and it just it, it is it just it's wonderful to know that how I'm living and what I'm about resonates with you and so many other people in that you share you share it with me by sending me music he also sent me <clears throat> Radiohead's latest album, so I could own that on vinyl. Man doesn't have to do this. Thank you so much, Tommy. So what do I think of this? Well, I really like Eno, Brian Eno. I like his mind. It's not that I like everything he does, but I like his approach. As a result of that, I've been able to, <clears throat> over the years, discern what it is he's about and find something to enjoy in all this music. I should have gotten real ready, but um, I first heard about, became aware of Brian Eno as a teenager in high school when I first discovered Roxy music. I still remember the first time I saw this cover. I knew there was something about it that I wanted to know more. And then when I opened it and you saw the pictures of the band, you know, especially Eno, It wasn't sex. It wasn't sex. It was, what is going on here? What's going on with these people? It wasn't about, ooh, are they gay? I mean, that's obviously something that you think about, but the most thing was that it was exotic and it was different. It's like, what is this? And then what Eno did to the Roxy Music sound. I have all of Roxy Music's albums. I have them all. I'm just showing these right here. The rest are over here. I have them all. Uh, these first albums are just excellent. But it was when he left Roxy Music and started his solo stuff, I followed him. And I've learned a lot about music and listening through um, following the work of Brian Eno. He coined the term in a popular sense, but he didn't invent ambient music, but he coined the term ambient music for the masses. If you can if you can give that claim to anyone, you can give it to Brian Eno. There were many before him doing ambient music. But I'd have to say that I consider Brian Eno a master of this of this type of music. I try to make ambient music. My Sonosphere 1 and 2 albums are ambient albums. I don't try to sound like Eno because I've tried to and I can't. I can't. The man is brilliant. The way that he sets up sounds to... The way that I experienced this album. And this... I, can, I really like this album, but this is one where you benefit from it being on download. It's a 54-minute uninterrupted piece. So listening to it on vinyl, you know, it has to fade and you flip it over. This is one of the few records why I use the download code. I've already played the album all the way through on download at least six times now. A couple times for company. It works great both in the fore and the background. There is so much to dive into on an active level as a listener if you want to. This is not just... This is not background music at all. He 
creates wonderful shimmering burbling and co ever moving landscapes of audio and reflection is one of his best it is this is just gorgeous thank you so much Tommy Sosa um, I've shown them before but I have a lot of Eno records I do oh, I'll try to show them what can I, can I get for them is that all of them no it's not all of them there we go Yeah, when I like something, I like it. And um, Brian Eno's uh, catalog and what he's done is continues to teach me. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, the thing he started with Robert Fripp on No Pussy Footing. I just played this recently. It still works. It's still wonderful. Here come the warm jets. I've always been... Um, it, it's always uh, blown my mind how Eno got away with putting a porno pornographic picture on the cover of his album, and and it just n there's no controversy about it. Do you see the playing card there? It's one of those old erotic playing cards. It's a woman squatting and pissing in the street. It's right there on the cover. And I've never even heard it mentioned once in a review or by anyone. I think that's fascinating that Eno was able to do that. 12 inch single from the project he did with David Byrne. Here's a more recent uh, ambi ambient album of his Lux, which I thought this is also really good. I like this a lot. This one that he made with um, My Squelchy Life, it's an older album that didn't get released until recently. And I see why. It's just okay. When I first got this Eno Hyde album, Someday World, I, I didn't like it. And then I just had to li keep listening to it to, to see what it is they're doing. I really like this. Here's one of his projects that I think um, never quite gels. Uh, Small Craft on a Milk Sea with John Hopkins and Leo Abrahams. Every time I go back and listen to this, it's like it's just something doesn't quite gel here. Nice idea but it doesn't work on the other hand drums between the bells with rick holland love this eno album this is i think this is real good eno great 12 inch nicholas jar with the, with the grizzly bear and brian eno great stuff you know about this one with david byrne this was a game changer for a lot of people my life in the bush of ghosts absolutely so that's what i like about eno his ideas are intense and um they're there he sets precedence you know with his ideas the music for apollo fantastic the panic of looking 12 inch single from the drums between the bells here's a compilation more blank than frank you know yeah i love this stuff i do fractal zoom 12 inch single and then his famous ambient works uh, ambient series this is my favorite of them is on land his some people say it's John Hassel or LaRage I like both of those but this is the one this is the num the ambient album of the series that I think is the best the way this one ends with Dunwich Beach autumn 1960 wow wow with the fellows from Cluster, after the heat. I got the other one that they did, Cluster and Eno. This is good stuff, people. I used to have discrete music. I don't anymore. I had the original on obscure music, you know, and then I sold it like an idiot. But here's music for films. Evening Star with Fripp again. And then I replaced it finally with a, a reissue of discrete music but I had an original when it first came out I bought it another green world I have before and after science on on CD I don't have it on vinyl and this is a great one by Eno taking Tiger Mountain by strategy and just to make a point here I really do love Eno I have his box sets one and two these are 
collectibles. Let me show you the right the right side. Yeah. I, br I dig Brian Eno's music. So Edward Tommy Souza, thank you so much for allowing me to add the new one to my collection. Um, that's the main thing I want to share with you is how much um, Eno's music and ideas inspire me. The last thing I want to say is that I will not shy away from sharing my political views on my channel here, especially now that Trump is in office. Um, it's just real, uh, it's just um, mind blowing to me the people who still support him, how they apparently are completely blind to how this man operates and what and how what he does, how it affects people like me. You know, his business interest and how he runs his business is not beneficial to people like me. Even if he can create jobs, that's not enough. Um, I don't dislike Donald Trump personally, although I know some people who really do hate him. I don't hate him. I hate what he's about. I've been living with it all my entire life. Um, white privilege, um, uh, rich class privilege, um, double standards, lies fed to people so that the people on top can continue to prosper. And they say things that the common man will believe like an idiot. And I'm not an idiot. Although I'm a common man, but I'm not an idiot. Am I calling Trump supporters idiots? No. But if I were to, but with the content of my life and what's happened to me, if I were to follow him, I would be an idiot. He's doesn't. He's not doing anything with my best interest at heart. I doubt he's doing anything with your best interest at heart either. I really doubt it. That's that. So. Thank you for the music. Thank you for the music. And music is the healer. Music is the healer. Thank you so much for very interesting comments. Um, some comments I just don't answer because the questions will... See, people, since you see me here, you know, I am an easy person to like when you see me. But when we get in conversation, certain things will come up and if it in, com in person, if it strikes me as an ain or kind of dumb, I'm gonna say so. Or it's like, why are you asking me that question? Like someone asked me about Elvis Presley. Well, the thing that dawned on me is that I've been living my entire life with this attitude, which is mainstream music is second rate. Everybody knows about Elvis. Everybody knows about the Beatles and James Brown. Not saying they're second rate, but just that what I've discovered by being interested in music as art, what is what is pushed by the industry is music as entertainment. And so I see these two tiers. So I, for the longest, have not felt the need to tell you about mainstream music, like, for example, Elvis Presley. Ask me about Elvis Presley. Well, shit. I grew up in the Elv era when Elvis was the great white hope, okay? So right away, that that taints the picture of Elvis because I lived through the legacy of what they were trying to do with Elvis. Well, if we can just get a white boy that's got that nigger sound, we don't have to listen to niggers. Right? Them black folks sure do have rhythm and they can dance, can't they? Sure would like to find a white boy who could do that. We could, just... And this is what was going on. I'm not making that up, people. This is history, okay? So that has a lot to do with why I, I got no reason to listen to Elvis Presley. Do I have an Elvis Presley record in my collection? Actually, I do. I have one that's collectible, but I'm not gonna go dig it up right now. I got one, okay? And then someone else asked me about smooth jazz female vocalists. It's like, if you've been looking at what I show, that question don't even fit what I show. So that's why I didn't answer it. I'm not listening to no damn Sarah Vaughn and sexy women singing you know, music. To That's how it strikes me. That's how a lot of female, uh, uh, not females in jazz, but a lot of mainstream smooth jazz just seems like it's music for fucking. And I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the music for art. So if you want to know about a woman that I think you ought to hear in jazz, um, of course, Ella Fitzgerald and Sarah Vaughan, amazing women, but what, Betty Carter, you want to hear a real artist? Someone amazing that never got her due? Right there, Betty Carter. You want a white one? Blossom Deary, okay, there you go, all right? Can I sometimes be a little um, impatient and arrogant? Yeah, I'm human. 
and I'm also a, <laughs> I'm also a black man who has lived through the legacy of madness in this country. You know, if if you if some of you who are not a minority, and I'm including all minorities, all of my Hispanic and Arabic and all people, you, you white people, my brothers, but if you if you have not had the experience of having brown skin in a white biased world, you probably don't completely understand my first my irritation and anger when it comes up. However, I think most of you other folks who have been living through it and are still living through it, you know what I'm talking about. 